This video is going to show you how to set up probe image to acquire WDS intensity maps. And if done properly, we can also use calc image to quantify those maps and produce uh, full concentration maps of the element of interest uh, with background subtractions, interference corrections, matrix corrections, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to go to probe for EPMA. Uh, we're going to set up everything in probe for EPMA. Uh, our elements on which channels we're going to do our peaking uh, standard assignments for the quantification of those maps all of that's going to be done in probe for epma and then we'll transfer that image to probe image and or calc image as necessary uh, from the sample setup so if you're not familiar how to do the sample setups uh, there are videos on this channel we're not going to go through that in this video um, but you would create a new sample setup here and then you would assign your analytical conditions your elements your standards etc so I'm going to show you the method I've already got set up here, and this is a method for uh, doing quantitative maps on feldspars. Uh, so we have all of our feldspar major elements here, and then we have barium as a trace element, and we've got it on four different channels, uh, so we can aggregate those intensities for better counting statistics. So at this point, you need to pay uh, close attention to your spectrometer Tetris. And what I mean by that is how you've arranged each element on each channel to be the most efficient for mapping. Because on my probe, I have five spectrometers, so I can only do five elements at once. So, for example, um, I'm running uh, barium here on lift, despite having it on PET on all of these other channels. And the reason I had to do that is because I have to measure iron. And iron requires a lift crystal. And when I go to my second pass, I don't want to have to do a crystal flip and potentially have to re-peak the spectrometers. Uh, I've done the same thing. Normally, you would measure silica on a tap crystal. Uh, but in this case, I'm doing it on PET in order to also be able to use this channel for barium. Uh, so pay close attention to your spectrometer Tetris. Um, once we've assigned all of our elements and our analytical conditions we've got everything on the channels we want it at this point we need to peak the spectrometers just like you would for a spot analysis so we come in here to our peaking options and peak uh, acquire phas as necessary and get everything ready to rumble as if you were doing a spot analysis so i've done all that already um, and i have a good setup i've chosen everything i want and now we can go to probe image and begin the process of actually uh, setting up the maps so in probe image, uh, you can go to setup, acquisition, and it brings up this window. Um, in order to save these acquisitions for later, uh, we can go to file, save acquisition. And actually, I'm going to do that first. Uh, you can actually alter those uh, acquisitions without saving them, um, and it can get a little dangerous. You can overwrite things that you uh, wanted to save. So the first thing I always do is I'll save whatever setup I was working on uh, just to have it for later in case I need to, to uh, go back and either use it or look at the parameters. So I'll just save this uh, as last setup just so I have a copy of it. Uh, then I will immediately save it again with a different name for my new acquisition. So we'll call this one demo setup. And I will save that acquisition. And now when I work on it, uh, I'm not in danger of overwriting any of my other work. So we go back to setup acquisition and we get the uh, acquisition setup window here and this is where we can uh, choose what channels to acquire this is where we set the corners or centers for our maps uh, this is basically the entire setup process in probe image so as you can see here my old setup is for sulfides so that's not going to work for us so the first thing i want to do is i want to get the correct elements and all of their correct parameters in here and the easiest way to do that is to go back to probe image uh sorry probe for epma and we're going to go to peaking options and in peaking options i'm going to select the elements that i want for my first pass remember we're going to do two passes here so i'm going to select those first five elements and I'm going to hit this move selected elements to on peak positions. So now the probe is going to drive every, all the spectrometers to those positions. And of course, we could manually enter what we want here, uh, but that would be quite a tedious process. So if we use this move selected elements to on peak positions, what that does is it moves them to the right places. But more importantly, it updates the element file, which is a file that stores uh, the parameters in probe for EPMA. And as you can see here, we can read the element file. So now that I've moved everything to those positions, if I hit read ELM here, you see it switches to sodium, 
switches crystals, background positions, the whole nine yards are picked here from that ELM file. So in this case, we want to do ELM all, and you can see now I have all of my elements as uh, set up in Probe for EPMA over here. So of course I want to enable all of these channels. And now we have our spectrometer set up for our first pass. Uh, we can also go through and change uh, parameters here in these tabs. Unfortunately, EDS inputs, this is uh, sort of future-proofing the software. We, it is uh, not available at this time, hopefully will be in the near future. Um, we can do analog inputs. This is just the image that you're gonna acquire. So you could acquire a BSE image, an SEI image, or any image you have available. And of course, we're gonna enable that. So now we'll get all five element intensity maps plus uh, an SEI or BSE image in this case uh, to go along with our maps. And then finally, column conditions. So here we can check this box for use current instrument column settings, and it'll just use whatever the probe is sitting at at that time. Uh, but we can also tell it uh, to run at a specific KV and uh, beam size. And just for reference, I like to keep the beam size the same as the pixel size. So we'll set that to five, which is the same as our pixel size here. So at this point, we've got all of our setup, our condition setup. We need to actually choose our map position. So how we're going to do that is we've got three choices here. We've got beam, stage center, and stage two point. Beam is going to scan the beam over the sample. So it's going to drive the stage to a fixed location, scan the beam over the sample. And in that case, you will drive to your location. So let's say we want to uh, map this little crystal right here. We can drive to that position, we can switch to our camera view. And focus our scope. And let's say we want to measure and map this quartz crystal. So if we're going to do a beam scan, we want to set up the image with the magnification that we want. Line up our stage where we want, get it in good focus. And then we can just come back and go into probe image and click read XYZ and it will take the stage coordinates and, and Z axis for that. And we can then hit read magnification. Now it's gonna to drive to that position. It's gonna make a map that's 512 by 512 pixels. Uh, you can change that to whatever you want here. Uh, you can also type values in there. And it will collect that map by fixing the stage and scanning the beam. Now, be aware that this can be uh, problematic if your view is quite wide. For instance, this at only 200 uh, magnification, I'm looking at a half a millimeter by a half a millimeter. And so we're gonna get some uh, brag defocusing because that beam's gonna be deflected at quite a significant angle. Uh, and so that could be problematic for doing uh, uh, precise intensity maps, especially if you're trying to quantify. Um, if you're going to do a stage, uh, or I'm sorry, a beam scan, you probably should uh, consider zooming in to uh, at least 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, uh, so that you get this field of view down such that you're not defocusing the beam uh, and defocusing the basically Bragg equation. Um, uh, because of the deflection of the beam. So we can also do a stage center map. Uh, and that's going to be similar in that we're going to read our XYZ position, so the center of our map, but now it's going to calculate the uh, boundaries of that map and it's going to raster the stage to create that map. Um, so in this case, you now need to pick the pixel size and the map size, and that will determine, uh, sorry, the image size and the pixel size, and that will determine the map size. Uh, with basically just one coordinate in the middle. Now we have these uh, z-axis updates here. Those are if you, for instance, in this case, I've got a two millimeter by two millimeter map. Um, it may not be a flat sample and I may have an issue with uh, a tilt on the sample. So by allowing you to click this move up or left, it's actually going to move 
the stage to that new position and we can check our focus and make sure it's in focus and if it's not we can update that focus by hitting the read button here and then we can move to the other corner you can see that there must be some tilt on this sample i'm a little out of focus now so i focus it and hit read and now i can uh update all four of those corners and probe for EPMA, uh, sorry, probe image will uh, account for the tilt and adjust the z-axis as the map goes in order to uh, remain in good focus. And lastly, there is stage two point. So in this scenario, uh, maybe we want to map uh, the corners, pick the corners. Uh, we don't know exactly how big our map's gonna be. Uh, so we can go to our phase of interest and we can select two corners, opposite corners. Uh, so let's say we want to map these two here. We can then pick our one corner, go into probe image, and hit read XY. Then we can go to another corner, adjust our focus line it up where we want it, return to probe image, read X2, Y2, uh, and it doesn't matter which two corners you pick or which order, uh, as long as they're just opposite corners. And now, uh, probe image will calculate the size of your map uh, based on the pixel size and where you picked your corners. So here we could do a one micron pixel, and now you can see that it's going to calculate that we need that many pixels. Uh, I didn't mention this. Uh, this is dwell time. So this is how long it's going to dwell for each pixel. Um, in general, for good intensity maps, you want to get at least, you know, 20, 30, 40 milliseconds, uh, maybe as much as 100. But as you can see, when we get small pixels, long dwell time, we get pretty long uh, maps. Okay, so that's how you set up your position data. You can also do the same thing. You can move to the corners. You can see, adjust the focus, just like you can in the stage uh, center map, um, and move to each one of those and adjust them. So at this point, we've got all of our uh, map corners selected for our first pass of the map. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select my second set of elements and I'm going to hit move selected elements to on peak positions. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to update the ELM file for the new set of five. And we can add those to our maps. So now we have pass one all set up and ready to go. And at this point, Rather than try and pick new corners and get everything exactly the same, the best option here is to just duplicate this map and change the element list that we're going to do. So what I'm going to do here is highlight it and just hit insert after. And you can see now that both of these are identical. Uh, just copies that map. So then I can rename this to pass two. And now I'm going to click on pass two. I have my sodium, calcium, iron, potassium, silica, but because I've moved my positions here, all I have to do is hit ELM all, and now I have my second pass set up. So at this point, we're basically ready to acquire our maps. Uh, we've got each pass set up. They're both identical. Everything's good to go. We could indeed, because this is a trace element map, maybe we want to go crazy here and put 500 millisecond in and make a 98 hour map um, so you can independently alter the variables for either one of these maps and they are saved so at this point we're ready to go we've got our map set up but i'm going to show you one more thing we could at this point just go to acquire start and it will start uh, acquiring those maps it'll move the stage set all the spectrometers and off it goes but I want to show you how to automate probe image to go along with probe for EPMA. So we're going to go to probe for EPMA. We're going to go to automate. Oh, cancel that out. We're going to go to automate. And in this case, uh, let's say we want to run our standards. We've got our mean atomic number standards and our calibration standards that are going to go with our maps. 
uh, and we've picked all of our standards. We've got them, uh, the positions digitized properly. Uh, there is a video on how to use automate and digitize positions um, on this channel. So I've already done that already. So I'm going to go ahead and hit select standards. It's going to grab all my standards. I'm going to hit acquire standard samples, and then it's going to run all of these standards, and then I can have it automate probe image. So I can come in here and I can tell it to go ahead and run all of the standards and then open probe image and run the probe image run with the map. So I could do this overnight. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit automate probe image. And now it's asking me for a probe image setup, and this is for the probe image acquisition file. So we're going to go get our probe image acquisition file. So we come in here, we've got our setup, got it all good how we like it. And after we've done all of our adjustments to the parameters, we're going to hit save acquisition. We're going to save it here, and that's going to be demo setup. So then I can come in here, I can tell probe free PMA that I want this demo setup. So that's the setup it's going to use, uh, the acquisition setup. So that's where we've stored all of our maps. And then I need a probe image sample setup. So to do that, you can go into analyze. And you see here, I've got all these setups. So I've got my probe image uh, set up and that's going to have my elements and my accelerating voltages and currents and that sort of thing. And if I haven't already, I'll hit add to sample setups. And now I can tell probe image to use this setup. And now what will happen is PFE will run all of the standards with whatever sample setups you want for those. So if you want it to be something different than what you're going to have probe image do. So I had 50 nanoamp current for that short dwell time. That's going to be no problem, but I probably don't want to run 50 nanoamps on all my standards. So I can set up another setup with, uh, let's see, different conditions. So let's do 15 nanoamps on that guy. And I can tell the standards to run this mapping setup. So now to run all my standards at 15, it'll then set the probe to 50 based on this setup, and it will go off and run those maps. And when you hit run selected samples, PFE is smart enough. Uh, it's telling me that I have probe image open. This is a little unintuitive. It needs probe image to be closed because it is going to open it. So let's close that. And then we hit run selected samples. And now it's actually going to calculate. It's going to say you got eight hours of standard. You got 98.8 .8 hours of maps. And that's a total of 106 hours. And if I hit yes, probe for EPMA would uh, drive off and start analyzing my standards. And when that was finished, it would trigger probe image and start running my maps. So hopefully that helps you with the setup for probe for EPMA and probe image in order to acquire WDS maps.